Listen, we are going through some changes with the setup here. I feel like the lighting for this one is astronomically better than the last few videos. So we'll see how this works for a while until I get my filming space set up. And I'm feeling Hi Lemonheads and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Brianna. I'm a certified personal trainer, a big huge biology nerd and a registered dietitian to B. And today we have a fun and special episode. The Amazon truck is here. Since it is now February, I thought it would be cool to do something in honor of Black History Month. I've never done that before. Also because you know, I'm black in case you have not noticed. I thought it would be cool to combine one of the themes of my channel of nutrition with some black history. So today I'm gonna tell you guys about a very cool and inspirational woman named Gladys Jennings. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lols and some dry sarcasm along the way, hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand. I would really love to have you here. Without further ado, Let's make lemonade. So as I just said, today we're gonna talk about somebody named Gladys Jennings. She's a registered dietitian, nutrition researcher, and trailblazer when it comes to exploring how nutrition affects health, particularly among the black community. She's won numerous awards and made incredible contributions to nutrition research. And I bet you probably have never heard of her. That's about to change. Get your lemonade. Gladys Kid Jennings was born on October 11th, 1925 in Columbus, Ohio. FYI, she'll be 98 years old this year. Her father's name was Wesley Cooper and he was a Presbyterian minister. And her mother's name was Charlotte Melinda Cooper and she was a teacher. Miss Jennings was born during the Great Depression, so times were particularly tough. Something very interesting about her uh, family history is that her grandparents were actually enslaved. She was only the second generation of her family to be born free in the United States. Her grandmother, who was a slave had the job of keeping the master's child comfortable during school lessons. And I read that and I don't, I didn't really understand what that meant. Bringing, bringing the kids snacks. I don't know. I read that and I was just like, what does, what does that mean? I didn't get an elaboration, but you know, it was a different time. So, you know, different things. I wasn't super surprised to hear it um, because kind of in that time period, it's interesting how, uh, you know, racism was just normal back in that time. But a lot of black people who were um, either during slavery were slaves or even after slavery were um, like maids to uh, kind of upper middle class and middle class white families. They played a big role in raising children. It's interesting. Uh, watch the movie, The Help. That's a really good movie. Her grandmother was 11 years old when the Emancipation Proclamation took effect. And upon being given her freedom, she was in a slightly better position than most other slaves because unlike most other slaves, she could actually read and write. So because of that, she actually went on to teach former adult slaves how to read. Hey guys, it's editing Brianna popping in. I'm popping in to let you know that the audio quality is about to suck. <laughs> I have no idea what happened, but as I'm sitting down to edit this, my audio file somehow just got horribly corrupted. I don't know what happened to it, but it's just completely unusable. Luckily, it's only going to be a uh, messed up, I guess, for the next uh, couple of minutes. It's not going to last for the duration of the video. And then I guess my mic, I don't know, picked back up again and decided it was gonna act right and started recording normally again. So I just wanted to let you guys know there will be a drop in audio quality for like two minutes. Sorry about that. So Miss Jennings attended all black elementary school and uh, middle schools. And it was while she was in high school that she said she liked to cook, quote, fancy stuff. She said she got a lot of her inspiration from cooking magazines. And it's from here that her interest in like food science and nutrition really started. And then she became interested in clinical dietetics. So after high school, she went off to college and attended Ohio State University and studied just that, dietetics. And in 1945, she graduated with her bachelor's degree in dietetics. The next year, she enrolled in a graduate program at what was once called Washington State College, but we now know it as Washington State University. And during her time as a graduate student, she focused a lot of her research on the impacts that the prototype microwave had on the nutrition content of frozen peaches. I read that and I was like, wow, that's so specific, but that's really cool. That's so interesting that that, that uh, was her area of interest. Then in 1948, Gladys Jennings made history, becoming the first African-American woman to earn a master's degree from Washington State University. After she graduated with her master's, she decided she wanted to pursue education and research. So she devoted her career going forward to that. She began researching methods to improve one's health by harnessing the power of nutrition and food safety as well. Some of the institutions she taught at were very distinguished universities, including Syracuse, Spelman, and North Carolina Central University. Fun fact, I have begun applying to dietetic internships and one of the internships I have, I'm going to apply to 
is the dietetic internship at North Carolina Central University. She also at some point got a Fulbright fellowship to Jen Elizabeth College at the University of London. Also during her time at Spelman, she sat as chair of the home economics department from 1955 to 1961. In addition to teaching, she also authored several professional essays on nutrition. And during all this from 1961 to 1963, she actually worked as a registered dietitian at Grant Hospital in her hometown of Columbus, Ohio. Also, she became president of the National Organization of Blacks in Dietetics and Nutrition, a position she held for over 30 years. Also something else that's really cool is one of her students actually went on to become president of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. For those of you who don't know, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the uh, A&D, and you hear a lot of dietitians just refer to it as the Academy. The Academy is like the big, well, they're supposed to be like the big head honcho and of, of dietitians. <laughs> We could have a conversation about the Academy at some point, but this is not the video for it. So if we could just stop and check in really quick. This woman is a badass. <laughs> She's breaking glass ceilings, busting down doors. And this was all during a time where black people, black women especially, just really did not have any advantages in society. Obviously there's still a bunch of racist POSs that exist now, but the world we live in now is nowhere near like the world that existed in 1950. Hello. Okay. So when you consider all this for that time period, okay. All right. This is not gonna, you're gonna get down. You're gonna get down. So when you consider all of that for the time period, her accomplishments were phenomenal and quite inspiring. And honestly, even in 2023, these are incredible accomplishments. So in 1966, she actually went back to Washington State University and stood as associate professor within the Department of Food and Nutrition. During her time in that position, she researched how to improve the dietary habits of African-Americans. And this is an area that I personally found really interesting. Statistically, when it comes to black people, in the United States, we are one of the most unhealthy ethnic groups. I'm saying we, cause I'm a black female. We have the highest uh, rates of chronic disease such as obesity, type two diabetes and heart disease. In, in general, chronic disease is believed to be brought on by lifestyle and environment, which include diet. I think researching ways to improve the dietary habits of an ethnic group is, I think it can be touchy because you don't ever wanna come off as if you're dumping on somebody's cultural foods. This is where cultural competency is really important. Looking at you, Alana. Miss White Rice is bleached sugar and has no nutritional value. Just so everybody knows, I'm never gonna get over that. <laughs> so maintaining cultural competency while helping someone improve their diet in terms of nutritional value is tough, but it is something that registered dietitians are taught. You never ever wanna disrespect someone's culture or tell someone that a food that they frequently enjoy as part of their heritage is wrong or bad. Hey, both of you. Mommy is creating. I think there's definitely a discussion to be had um, when it comes to the health disparities that plague the black community. There are multiple factors that contribute to the development of chronic disease. And being that diet is one of them, girl. There are multiple factors that contribute to the development of chronic disease. And being that diet is one of them, working to improve nutrient intake of everybody is a wonderful thing. And I think it can be especially valuable in the black community. And that was a big part of it for Ms. Jennings in her research. I could tell that she definitely demonstrated cultural competency. What she believed in was looking at what people were already eating and then seeing what she could learn and work toward a way to bring about the best for them. Can you come get Stormy, please, and Onyx? They just won't stop. So later on during her time at Washington State University, she actually sat on the campus committee that developed Washington State's first black studies course. She also created and later went on to teach another black studies course. That one was called Black Community Health and Nutrition. And for her contributions in black studies to the university, the library at the Talmadge, I hope I said that right, Anderson Heritage House was named in her honor. Is this woman not a total beast or what? In 1973, she started as interim chair for the Department of Food, Nutrition, and Institution Management. And this term would last three years. So it was in 1991 that she finally retired from classroom instruction, but she still contributed to Washington State University by acting as a part-time recruiter for other students of color for the WSU's College of Agricultural, Human, and Natural Resource Sciences. I'm sorry, I'm looking down on my script a lot. There's just 
There's a lot of important stuff to say. I don't wanna get it wrong. Gladys Jennings finally retired from WSU in 2008, and today she is a self-employed nutrition consultant. Some awards that she has received include the 2005 WSU Alumni Achievement Award. In 2009, she was presented with the WSU Women of Distinction Award. In 1999, she received the Nobodon First President Award. During her entire career, Gladys Jennings was just a big advocate for just wellness, nutrition, and just living well. She told the Hub News, quote, it's not just just the eating. It's also about lifestyle. Our bodies were intended for use, not for pushing a button. So the more that you can use your body physically, the better off you are. Well, that was fantastic. I can't believe I have never heard of this phenomenal woman before. Granted, I'm sure she is very well known at Washington State University, but like some of her contributions were so incredible. This woman should be in textbooks. <laughs> Again, for the time, for uh, everything that I'm sure she had to deal with. Remember the height of her career was like the 50s through the 70s. It's not a secret, the 50s were an extremely racist time period for a black woman to just exist in. So I think it's safe to assume she probably dealt with some not so pleasant things uh, during her during her time, uh, working during these times. But she overcame it all, rose above adversity, and has an incredible legacy of contributions and accomplishments behind her. I wanna start doing this more. Obviously Black History Month is, is uh, you know, once a year, but like maybe I'll do something like this for Hispanic Heritage Month. And every now and then, like just like find somebody who's just really uh, inspirational and influential in the world of just like, food, science, and health, um, and share it with you guys. This video topic was honestly perfect for me because I was able to combine black history with food. Miss Jennings, thank you very much for all the work that you've done in the world of food science and nutrition. And also, if you haven't tried fudge covered Oreos, I would strongly recommend them. You've definitely earned it. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be it for me today, you guys. As usual, I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you learned something. I certainly did. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate you uh, watching till the end and sticking it out if in fact you did. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Queen Lemon, over and out. What are these two doing? Hey, caught y'all, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> hey, Elfa. Hey, baby girl. Come on, I need some dogs for the outro. I just need a dog. Go, go to the room. Is Zeus in here? Yeah. Oh, Zeus, doing what he does best, destroying. Zeus, why are you like this? <laughs> My husband, I guess, gave him the, uh, the soda box, the empty soda box. Why are you like this, Zeus? Zeus, would you like to say goodbye? Would you like to say goodbye? No? All right, Zeus doesn't have time to say bye to you guys. He's busy. All right, I'll, I'll tell him you said bye.